They can tell you anything they want, but you know, the reality is the numbers out there, the real numbers are horrible. They're downright scary. We also know that the silver price, the gold price, the platinum price have been fighting an uphill battle for what, the last two years now? But are all these numbers they're throwing at us, are they really a bunch of BS? And is the reality, is the reality which we're living under much different? Are we in a recession right now? Are we possibly heading to the D word, the depression? Are you prepared? Are you mentally prepared? Are you financially prepared for what that might bring? Today, we're going to talk about some of the recent numbers, numbers that came out this morning that did impact the price of silver, did impact the price of gold. Last I checked, gold was up almost $10, $11 per ounce. Silver had recovered from being down 25 cents per ounce and was heading into positive territory. What were the big numbers this morning? But more importantly, we're going to rip the covers off. We're going to dig in to some of the other numbers out there that tell us that we are in difficult times and likely could be heading into even more difficult times because this will impact our favorite subject. Look, if you're here, I hope you're a gold and silver enthusiast. You belong. It's a big deal you're here. Please give this a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Subscribers are able to leave chats during the chat session. Now, since we love silver and gold, we know today was the big jobs number. Today they announced the number of jobs that were created during the month of July. And lo and behold, the number came in lower than expected. Let me read you the data. But this is where it gets funny. This is where it gets interesting because there's something always hidden in the numbers that tells us things aren't that good out there. And let me say this first. Let's remember, these come from the, uh, the, B the BLS, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Washington, D.C., right? Those fine government employees. A lot of people say should, they should drop the L and just call it the Bureau of BS because the way they calculate these numbers is very, very suspect. We'll leave it at that. But these numbers have been what single-handedly have handed silver and gold some real wallops over the last number of months. I think for like 14 months in a row, there was a point where we had beats in the job numbers. And everybody's like, if everything's so good, and you know the story, you know it, you know what I'm going to, you know what I'm going to tell you next, right? Wherever you're sitting, in Omaha, in Oregon, in Mississippi, you know what I'm going to tell you next, right? You know, right? Let's talk. Here's the numbers. Non-farm payroll came in at 187,000 jobs created in July. That Joe Biden economic build back better is working just dandy. But the consensus expectations were that we would have 200,000 jobs. So the number actually came in lower than expected. And remember, that number is BS. Okay, that's a fact. Remember that. But this is the part. Now, this, this, does this make you angry? Because it makes me angry. This happens every single month without exception. They do this to us. They do this to us. Because, you know, last month, obviously, they gave us June's numbers. And the month before that, they gave us May's numbers. And every single month, and let you, do I have this wrong? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'm right. I think I might be right on this one. And that is, they revised the previous month's numbers down. This month, they, re they revised the previous two months. May numbers were revised lower by 25,000 jobs. June's numbers were revised lower by 24,000 jobs. What does that tell you? Number one, these numbers are BS. Number two, then they come out in the next months and they revise the numbers down. This, this gentleman, CEO technician on Twitter, he brought up a good point. So not only did they miss by 13,000 jobs this month, but when you add in the other 49,000 jobs, 
uh, they actually lost by or, or missed by 62,000 jobs. Now, this was good for the gold price and the silver price. Remember, on Monday, I predicted that Friday could be a huge day today, right now, that we could have a $50 swing in the price of gold. And when I talk about gold, I talk about, I'm talking about silver and platinum and palladium for that matter as well, that we would have a big beat. We actually almost had that $50 downdraft leading up to today. So yesterday I said, I thought we had a slightly better chance than average that we would have a up day today in the metals. Now it's early. I could still be wrong. But this is what's so interesting about gold. I'm going to give you a little, a little, you know this already. Maybe, maybe you don't know this already. But I'm going to give you a little tidbit of info about silver and gold and platinum. They're smart, okay? They don't just look at what's right in front of them. They're like you. You've got something in common. Maybe that's why you like silver and gold so much. Why you're an enthusiast. Why you enjoy being a basement dweller. Right? Because you're like silver and gold. You're also smart. Silver and gold, they don't look at what's right in front of them. They look at all the data out there and they anticipate what's coming down the road. I heard somebody once say they look around the corner. And sometimes they look around not just one corner, but the next corner also. So the price of gold that we see right now is based upon what it sees in the future. And as it sees, fewer and fewer jobs from these fudged numbers that we're getting from the BLS, right? It sees what's happening coming down the road. We can't ignore that these numbers aren't really real. And if they're skewed in one direction, guys, they're skewed to the upside, okay? Thanks again for being here right now. If you give this a thumbs up, it helps get the word out. We're trying to protect ourselves with silver and gold. Don't forget, also, in your mind, as you prepare for what may be coming down the road, think about other things you may need. Protection, uh, food, water, friends. You can't beat friends. And let me tell you something. Right now, you're making friends being here in the basement. We really are a community, right? We have a common interest and a commonality that binds us together. So as you think about what may be coming, right? People could be losing their jobs. Okay? People could be in bad finance. People could be losing possibly their homes. We don't want to think about that. That's a horrible scenario, but it could be coming down the road, right? We could be in a situation, if things get really bad, where we're out there having to barter for things like food. I mean, you never know, right? I think that's the extreme end. And I'm not saying that I think that is not, I'm not predicting that a month, six months from now, but it could happen. I'm going to take a little break for one second. I'm not going to leave you. You can still look at me. I'm going to have a drink of coffee. So, what does it tell you when you hear that the economy is so great, but the real number, some of these numbers, they have a harder time fudging, right? The jobs number, the in, what about the inflation number, right? You've heard of Shadow Stats. It's a website that calculates what the real inflation rate is. The inflation numbers, you know, you understand what it feels like to go to the grocery store and see that the staples that used to cost you maybe, you know, $100 a week now cost $140 a week. We know the inflation numbers are fudged, but some of these numbers they can't fudge. And I've got an interesting one here I want to tell you about that shows us things aren't good out there right now. This comes from Zero Hedge. <clears throat> in the in the headline is what do federal tax receipts, they have a hard time fudging that number, guys, and total receipts suggest about a recession. Oh, a recession? What's going to happen when we get a recession? What do you, you know what's going to happen, right? If we get a recession, what's that going to mean for silver and gold and platinum? We'll talk about that. Federal tax receipts suggest the GDI numbers, not GDP numbers, are accurate. They also point toward a recession. Tax receipts, uh, tax receipts and total receipts 
are from the Bureau of Economic Analysis, which also produces the government GDP estimates. I wonder if the Bureau of Economic Analysis has their offices next to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. I bet that's a fun place to work. <laughs> <laughs> Data's through Q1 of 2023 because it takes them a while to longer to add this up. Uh, gross, de uh, gross domestic income is not available in the first estimate of GDP for the quarter. So we just got GDP numbers, right? They were great. 2.4% growth. We're knocking it out of the park while we're spending a trillion more than we're bringing in. Okay. Tax receipt. I'm sorry. Here. Total, total receipts. This is the money, the total income, have fallen for three consecutive quarters. Three consecutive quarters. Tax receipts have fallen for two straight quarters. Guys, this is a number that cannot be fudged as easily, right? Gross domestic product, eh, it's got a little wiggle room in it, right? This number is not easy for them to fudge. What's it telling us? It's telling us one thing. The economy is slowing down, right? What, is, what happens when the economy slows down? So let's, let's review. The economy slows down. Our friends at the Federal Reserve have to resort to what they always have to resort to, and that is printing money, making up more paper money. All of this in an environment where they're already right there we're spending in this country a trillion more dollars per year than we bring in and we're bringing in now less money where does that trillion come from well they borrow it well the chinese don't want to give us any more money the japanese don't want to give us any more money right now you know where the money's coming from i'll tell you where the money's coming from the money right now is coming out of people's people that have their money in the banks and they're saying, well, I'm not going to keep my money in the bank. I can get a treasury that pays 5%. I'll do that. But that's only going to last for so long because the government's bringing in less money, okay? People are running out of money. We know that even though people are converting their savings into more things like treasury bonds and that, but that uh, that is shrinking. While at the same time, the deficit right? They're spending more, bringing in less is growing. The total debt is growing and the interest expense on it is growing. We are in a bad, bad, bad situation right now, okay? And people are starting to wake up. It's not just you. It's not, people are going to lose jobs. People likely are going to face financial hardship. The only thing I would recommend to you right now is try to pay off whatever debt you may have, okay? Be prepared. Try to have a game plan as to what you may do if things get really, really dicey here in the next six months. I hope I'm wrong, and I absolutely could be wrong. But when you look at basic laws of mathematics... We are we are heading into a scenario that doesn't look pretty and, and you know and again will silver and gold make us rich during this scenario? I don't know. Possibly, possibly, right? You could have some serious wealth creation if you hold a good amount of silver, gold, or platinum. But what we really what you really want to be focused on is being prepared, right? No mentally prepared and financially prepared for what could possibly come because the real numbers don't lie the real real numbers like not the gdp who cares right what a joke but the gdi even in an environment where you're 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 trusted respectable wonderful politicians in washington dc continue to spend your money like drunken sailors and the government i mean i, I won't i don't even i don't even want to get get started you can't fudge the trucking numbers from the transportation industry. Let's look at some other numbers that are telling us that there's a different story going on in the economy right now than what we're being told by our leaders. And this is not unusual, guys. They, you know, think about this. Let's not be let's let's be smart. You want to be smart about how you approach your life, okay? You're 
your your the leaders in Washington aren't going to tell you that things are bad or that things are that are that that we're in that there's a lot bubbling under the surface that could explode at any time. They aren't going to warn you. Have they ever warned you? Have they ever warned us that there's trouble brewing? No. Their, their game is confidence, right? They're only going to tell you things are bad when they absolutely are forced to tell us things are bad. And let's hear, let's just hear what the, let's just hear what the trucking industry independently is telling us. Uh, another article from Zero Hedge, freight volume and spending declined markedly in the second quarter. So that's what? April, May, and June. Truck freight volume and spending in the second quarter of 2023 declined, listen to this, by the highest level since the early days of the pandemic. It declined at the highest level since the early days of the pandemic. Now, oh, that's not a big deal, right? No, that's not a big deal. Trucking volume? Think, here's, here's, okay, the GDP is great. The economy is great. But why are the trucking companies saying their volume is collapsing? Because that's it. It's volume. It's the amount of goods being transported for final consumption at places like Walmart or Home Depot or Lowe's. And it's also pro, uh, par parts and part of the supply chain being shipped around the country for manufacturing. It's, it, it's <laughs> it declined by the highest level since the early days of the pandemic. So on a pure numbers perspective, because now let's just look at retail. Everything costs 25% more than it did just 18 months ago or two years ago. So they can say, oh, look, retail sales are up. Well, yeah, that's just measuring it in dollar terms. The simple way to think about it is the dollar store, which has become the dollar 25 store, right? Right. So now the dollar store, if they're still selling the same dollar amount, okay, Let's say they're selling $10 million worth of products every day. The volume, because now everything costs $1.25, is lower. And that shows that the economy is slowing. Activity is slowing. Listen to what, listen to what they say. Spending by shippers dropped 11% compared to the second quarter of 2022. So year over year, 11% decrease. Shipping volume dropped 9% year over year. But the economy grew at 2.4%, right, Joe? How did that happen? How did the economy grow at 2.4%, but the trucking industry is telling us that the volume of goods being shipped dropped by 10%. Now, that doesn't add up, does it? Does it add up to you? Does that make you a little suspicious because we got more. Quote, trucking is in the midst of a significant slowdown, said Bob Costello, senior vice president and chief economist at the American Trucking Association. I don't think the American Trucking Association has their offices in the same building as the Bureau of Labor and Statistics and whatever that other bureau was that came out with the GDP and GDI numbers. No. Hey, thank you for the, Ron, thank you for the super chat, my friend. Very much appreciated and warms my heart. Thank you, Ron McAdams. Thank you. This is independent. This is the American Trucking Association. Hmm. Why is it when we get news from economic type news from independent sources, it paints a completely different picture? And you know, you know what that's going to mean for your silver and gold price eventually. Weaker consumer demand for goods and weaker consumer demand for goods and a slowdown in manufacturing activity and housing starts are having a major impact on the end on the industry, especially carrier operations. So he's telling us that consumer demand, Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, right? Down. Slowdown in manufacturing, the car plants, the manufacturing facilities that we still do have in this country, activity down, and housing starts down. 
hmm, why is it that this independent source tells us this, but it's having a major impact on the industry, he said, especially carrier operations, but but the government people tell us everything's great. You got nothing to worry about. You know, just go out and get yourself. Okay, I can't resist it. I can't resist it. That Oh, I forgot. We got a hundred thumbs up. Should we do the silver bell, the new silver? This is an actual sterling silver bell, I'll have you know. And since you gave this video a hundred thumbs up, you get ten rings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your continued support and growth of this channel. And it's because we're coming together and talking about what we love, right? We're silver and gold enthusiasts, and we love to talk about what's going on. I want to mention to you quickly, I had a great conversation with Lynette Zhang yesterday. You can go to the Ron's Basement uh, channel. Thank you, Shadow Work. Appreciate your, your super chat, my friend. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Check out the interview, the conversation I had with Lynette Zhang. She is awesome and just really brought up some great points. You know, one of the best points she brought up is, are you confused right now? Maybe a little angry. Have you noticed that everywhere you go, like people are angry? I mean, people are more on edge than ever before. And Lynette brought up a great point. And I'll be honest, I probably find myself falling at times into that category as well, right? I'm not perfect. Things are confusing right now, right? Things are frustrating right now. And what Lynette said, she said, that's, and I, and, 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 and I don't want to put words in her mouth, but what I got out of her is because that's because we're nearing the end. We're nearing, you know, the system has gotten so screwed up we're being fed so much uh, information that is suspect, like we've talked about already today, that people are confused. People don't know what to do. Now, you know, what I know to do, I like to stack some silver, right? And I have some gold mining stocks. You know that, right? I'm not a huge prepper. But, but to me, if I have some silver, I'm at least prepared that I could use that in a barter type situation if we do indeed get into that type of an environment. I don't know. It's going to be very interesting to see how things play out here, guys, uh, uh, soon. Here, nation nationwide shipment levels have now decreased for five consecutive quarters. In the second quarter, shipping volume dropped most in the Northeast, 27%, and the Southeast, almost 13% year over year. The Southwest continued to be a bright spot with shipping increasing by almost 50, uh, increased by 15%. So if you're in the Southwest, you were buying some stuff. Um, it says in the spot market, we've been observing for a while, sharp spending drops caused by lower volumes and increased capacity. This trend has now solidly penetrated the contract freight market. And what do we know, right? What what else do we know about the the trucking? And because the guys, the trucking industry, it's like the lifeblood of oil and the trucking industry are like the lifeblood of the economy. Oh, don't we also know that the third largest trucking company in the United States just claimed bankruptcy? We've talked about this like six times now. Yellow trucking, boom, they're gone, huh? What, what is this telling us? What are the real numbers? And I want to talk next about you. Yes, you. This absolutely pertains to you because we got another shocking statistic about the average American. Now, you're all special and unique, right? And you know, right, even though we're special and unique, we come together here, we belong here. We're sitting around the old campfire at the Gold and Silver and Platinum Summer Camp talking about our you know our favorite our favorite subject matter okay but we're also part of let's talk about american you're not all americans either but if you are an american i've got a shocking statistic for you we're going to get to next let's go to the chat real quick and see what's going on hey guys wow thank you coin shop chris for being here tommy sevens wayne lemay says if there's a major food shortage food shortage what would you do if you went to Walmart and couldn't get any food? 
Who would give up food for your silver? Probably no one. I might give up, if I get hungry enough, would you give up some of your silver for food? Oh, who would give up their food for your silver? No. I, I respectfully disagree with that, Wayne. I think people, <clears throat> if there's a food shortage, right? Like if there's no food, but there will there will be food available. You may have to go out to the countryside. There will be, you know, people will adapt and people will barter for things of value, including silver. Silver has always, always uh, pr been able to be traded for food. I could go trade silver for food right now, okay? And to make it easy, I'd probably go to my local coin shop and convert it, not, not sell it. I'd convert it temporarily into this stuff, paper, right? And then I'd run to Aldi because it's right next to the coin shop, and I love Aldi, and I'd buy some food. You can always... Now, if there's a shortage, yes, I understand what you're saying. Like, you know, if there's a massive, drastic shortage, yeah, you may find yourself having a hard time, but I'm confident you could always find someone who would trade food for silver. Questions, guys, don't forget. Three question marks, but I got something... Uh, that I want to tell you about about the average American, which again is a real number, and it is startling. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. I'll trade you food for silver. <laughs> I bet you will, Silver Shire. <laughs> right now, I'm going to hold on to my silver. You know. Uh, that's how Coin Shop Chris and I met. He sent me a picture of a head of lettuce at his local grocery store for $5. And we joked and I said, yeah, would you trade an ounce of silver for four heads of lettuce, five heads of lettuce? I mean, it's insane right now how undervalued silver is. Absolutely. I haven't looked at the lettuce prices lately. But, you know, to me, I was just like, I wouldn't maybe if I could trade an ounce of silver for... 500 heads of lettuce, I might consider it at some point and distribute the lettuce, you know, sell it, whatever. But are you kidding me? There was a, not too long ago a point where you basically, the, 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 the value the, that was being uh, determined by the quote unquote market was that you could, you could trade one ounce of silver for four or five heads of lettuce. Give me a break. Hey, Thomas. Hey, Ron. Who buys silvers this month, and what kind are they stacking? I'm liking the generic buffaloes. Okay, guys, let us know in the comments so you guys can read. What are you stacking right now? I haven't bought for a while. The last major purchase I made uh, was from Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X. They will be sponsoring the channel. It's a company I did business with before I agreed to do a sponsorship, right? It's a company that, and actually I approached them about potentially doing a sponsorship for the channel because I was so happy with them. And anyway, um, that was my last real big, real silver purchase. I've bought some 40% um, Kennedy half dollars, the 65 to 69s, um, a few recently, well, not recently, but in the last few months. Um, yeah, I've, you know, I am, I am, I, I am uh, saving some dry powder, this stuff. <laughs> really, powder? Isn't powder a good word for this? <laughs> because that's what this turns into eventually. Powder, right? Right? Do you see a lot of these from from uh, from 1,000 years ago? Do you see any of these from 5,000 years ago? Do you see any of this? Here. This silver in here right? Part of it could very well be four or 5,000 years ago that it was dug up out of the earth. And remember, there's only so much of it in the earth. There's an infinite supply of this. Trees are growing all the time. And you know digitally there's an infinite, infinite supply, okay? There's a, there's a, there's a new piece of data out, a real piece of data that is shocking, absolutely, positively Shocking. We've talked about this in this video, about the real numbers, right? We covered the GDP, the, what, but what's the GDI telling us? 
What are the real employment numbers? We covered that, but there's another piece that has to do with the average American. This could be you, okay? And we're going to talk about it right now because I can't this this tells me the situation that a lot of Americans are in. <clears throat> the number of Americans able to afford Okay, imagine if you have a $400 surprise bill, maybe a car repair, maybe a home repair, whatever, a health bill. The number of Americans able to afford that $400 surprise slides in, in, the, in the era of Biden. Hey, thank you, Tony. Thank you for the super chat, my friend. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, the p number of people who can afford $400. Th I want you to think about this. Can you afford right now if a surprise bill came along? I hope it doesn't. We don't want that to happen. <laughs> I don't want you to have any surprise bills that show up. Do you do that when you go to the mailbox? Do you kind of say a little, oh, dear God, please, no, no surprises or only good surprises? I do. I'll be honest, right? I got a new mailman named Kevin. My old mailman's name was Bill. And when I met Bill 20 years ago, and I'm still friends with him, Bill said, Ron, you'll always remember my name because I'm going to bring you a lot of bills. <laughs> I said, there's the sewer right over there, buddy. Go ahead, throw them down there. Uh, nonetheless, if you got, if you went to your mailbox today, and oh my gosh, you didn't, you forgot, oh, $400 could you pay it? Because listen to this. This comes from uh, another one from Zero Hedge. As inflation and economic, and economic uncertainty crush American households. Yes, you are being crushed. You are. If you're in the top 1%, you're not being crushed. But if you're an average American, you are being crushed. Only 46% of adults have emergency savings to cover a $400 expense in the third quarter. That's right now. Only less than half of you and me, right? And look, guys, if you're in that situation right now, the only thing I would recommend is try to work on getting out of debt. Try to find ways. You know, there's plenty of second and third and fourth jobs in this Biden economic miracle we're living in. Try to find ways to lower your expenses. Try to find ways that you can earn more than you spend, which I know is, I understand is becoming increasingly difficult. It takes determination. It takes resourcefulness, right? I like to, I have a little secret I'll share with you, okay? I like to call myself resourceful Ron because I'm resourceful. Some people would say I'm frugal. Some people would say I'm a tightwad. You can say whatever you want. I like to think I'm resourceful, right? I, I don't kill myself trying to find the best deal, but I always try to find the best value in whatever I'm doing, right? And I know you do too. And by the way, I value you being here. Do you think we can get to 200 thumbs up? At that point, I will ring, see my elbow by the crystal ball, that cowbell over there. If you give this a thumbs up, it helps us connect with more people. And that's important. And it does help my channel, right? And I'm not going to lie to you. I'm interested in my channel doing well. Anyway, nonetheless, only 46% of you can afford a $400 expense. Wow. You know, I had that happen to me lately. Um, I had a colonoscopy. And uh, I thought that it was going to be completely covered by my health insurance, which is what the health insurance company told me. But since this... Uh, the doctor did it in his office, and he's a great guy. He's awesome. And then I got a $400 bill from the uh, anesthesiologist, and I was like, what? What? You know, I mean, 400 bucks is is it's a lot. Anyway, I'm working that out. But the $400 bill, you know, when it shows up, when you're not expecting it, um, for me and our household was kind of like, oh, my God, you know, what? What the heck? Right? So if you if that happens to you, only less than half of the people can afford to pay it. That it's two percentage points lower than survey results from the second quarter. So the number of people who now don't have the money to pay any kind of an, of a surprise bill is growing. <laughs> 
Ah, it appears the financial well-being of the consumer is deteriorating. Here's a quote. The share of U.S. adults who said they would cover a $400 emergency expense with cash or equivalents dropped by 2% to 2 percentage points from the previous quarter to 46%, highlighting how cash strapped, right? You know, this stuff, paper. I mean, they don't even have paper. Many Americans are cash strapped despite the recent decrease in headline inflation. According to the survey developed by Bloomberg, okay, so this is from Bloomberg, a majority of the 11,000 adults surveyed said they would either need to depend on debt or be unable to cover the emergency expense. 35% of the respondents said they would need to use at least some debt steady from the previous quarter, while an increasing share, okay, 19% of people said they would not be able to pay at all. But we're living in such a great, strong economy. I'll tell you what's happened, guys. And it makes me very angry. I don't know. If, do you get angry when you think about this? The fact that in the last 20 years, the wealth di distribution in this country, the wealth has been sucked out of the middle class, right? The people like you, the people like me, and I have another job that I go to, by the way, a kind of a, re a retirement job. It's the best job in the world. I'll tell you more about it some other time. But I have a little job I do in the evening. The people that go to work, the people that work hard, that do all the work, pay a lot of the taxes as well, right? Their wealth has been sucked out. And where did it go? It went right to the top, okay? And it's not headline news. It's not being reported because they don't want people to know that. They don't want you to know that the top half of 1% of people in the country, 1 in 200 people, are multiples more wealthy now than they were like in 1980, okay? And the problem is that's not sustainable. It's like a snake eating its own tail. Eventually, that will come home to roost, right? Eventually, all these funny numbers they're putting at us, telling you everything's okay. What's wrong with you? Everything's fine. The economy's great. Why do you feel uneasy? You know, you're in good shape. Everything's wonderful. We've got violence. We've got breakdowns. And I mean, have you read about San Francisco? Have you read about what it's like? In San I was in San Francisco uh, 20 years ago. I remember it being just like this wonderful, beautiful city. Okay? You read about it now, and you hear what's going on in San Francisco. Look at what's going on in Chicago. I lived in Chicago for six years in the city. Never had a real problem, to be honest with you. Now, and I talk to friends that live there, it's different. Don't even talk about St. Louis, where I live. I'm telling you, in the city, in St. Louis, it can be downright scary, okay? I don't like it, um, uh, you know, but you don't go, like, out walking around at night in, in St. Louis, in the city. It's scary. Things are getting very, very uh, interesting, let's say, in the world. We need to protect ourselves. We need to be careful. I want you to protect yourself. I want you to be careful. We're almost at 200 thumbs up. Now I, I only need eight more thumbs up. And I'm going to ring this sucker. I have to carefully move it so I don't pre-ring. Right? This is from our subscriber, Joe F. Right? I ring the cowbell at 200 thumbs up. Oh, hey, let's go to... I forgot. All right, this is your time. Man, the most important part of the, of the broadcast. You... If you want me to talk about something, here's all you have to do. Look on your keyboard. I don't even know where it is. I'm looking. Where is it? Oh, it's over on the right-hand side. There's a question mark. Press shift, hit three question marks, and then tell me what you want to talk about. We're going to wait a few minutes. We got 214 thumbs up. Let's ring the cowbell, huh? Let's do it. Here's the silver. Here's the gold. Also, please, please, uh, female stackers. Yes, I almost forgot Coin Shop Chris. And thank you for subscribing. And thank you, Coin Shop Chris, for your help. Thank you, Mary Radcliffe, for your help. Thank you, Neil from Neil Hans Dynasty, for your help. And thank you 
to everyone who's here, and in particular, our growing number of lady stackers. Someone recommended that's how I refer to it because there's more and more females coming into the stacking community. Lynette Zhang said she observed the same thing. I talked to a number of coin shop owners recently who observed the same thing. The more, the merrier. And somebody sent me some statistic that said that like 90% of purchase decisions are made by women. Um, like even, and I know that's the case here with Susie. <laughs> Susie bought a new area rug for our dining room. I should take a picture and show you. She redid our dining room. It's beautiful. But you know what? I, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Okay, we're going to talk about the women's staggers. Let me tell you what I loved about Susie. And she's been doing this for the last couple years. She bought the rug off Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, it's a used rug, but it's beautiful and it works great. I've got a couch upstairs we got for $50. A wonderful, beautiful couch. And you want to know the hilarious part about this couch? It was from one of our neighbors. It was on Facebook Marketplace. We go to pick it up and when we're loading it up and the neighbor we're talking. She says, yeah, actually, I got this from your other neighbor, Charlie. And Charlie's my neighbor across the side of my house, across the street. I live on a corner. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So I always wanted to bring Charlie into the house and say, hey, look at our new couch. He'd be like, that looks familiar. <laughs> Where did I? Why? You, is this a home decor show? Oh, wait, that's later. That's the next live stream. This is about silver and gold and your questions. And yes, we have more lady stackers coming, okay? And that's a good thing. And I joked with Lynette, I said, I, I, because the number of women who watch my videos is going up, 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 up. And I said, I said, I told Susie that I think maybe it's because of my boyish good looks. And Lynette Zhang laughed. <laughs> if Susie doesn't quite agree with that. Anyway. Ron. Okay. Thomas has a question. Thomas Drellick asked the question, and he put three question marks. Thank you, Thomas, for doing that. That helps. That way I can know you have a question until your question goes off my screen. Okay. Ron, you read about the economy on you read about the economy on verge of collapse of Lebanon. Yeah, I just I saw a headline about that. Lebanon apparently they're saying their economy is dicey. And that's going on in a lot of places around the world, especially you know, the non-big major economies, a lot of them have a lot of debt. So I don't know a ton about that, Thomas, but I did see that headline and briefly read a little bit about it, but I don't have much. Hey, I got a super chat. What? Thomas, thank you. Same guy, Thomas Drellick. Thank you for the super chat, my friend. Very much appreciated. No. So I don't know, but I'll do some reading about it, okay? Mary said it was your good luck. So, <laughs> Mary... Mary, thank you, Mary, for being a moderator as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I'd like to think it's my good looks, but I think what it is is that, you know, um, I mean, we all want to be safe. We all want to be secure. But I think in particular, generally, um, a lot of women really put more value on safety of their family and security of their family. And what better way to do that? What's a good blanket, right? I like to refer to silver and gold as the blanket. Because if you have some physical silver, all those other needs, maybe not the friends and family, but a lot of the other needs you have, I believe, if we got into a very difficult situation, silver and gold could cover a lot of those. Food, security, other things. So I, maybe that's why we've got more women. The other thing, and, um, and I'm pretty sure I covered this with Lynette as well, is, guys, we got a lot of younger people, okay? My cousin's son, Bobby, I mean, smart guy, right? He's been texting. I mean, the, a lot of younger people are, are waking up to what's going on. And it's getting very, very interesting. Let's see what else we got here. Gardening. Yeah, that gardening is a great way. Where is that? Who said that? Ah, I'm still learning how to get around this. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Debbie is talking about gardening. Yes. And apparently, um, you guys want to check this out. If you're into that, uh, Lynette has a whole different website dedicated to 
gardening, urban gardening, how to protect yourself. Uh, so, and I'm sorry, but I don't have it off the top. She talks about it at this word, the end of our interview. You might be able to just Google Lynette Zhang gardening, food, something like that. But she has a whole website dedicated to um, how you can protect yourself with the food. What's your contingent plan when the shit... Oh, I'm sorry, I said the S word. Noel, what's your comp contingent plan when the SHTF? Um, you know, my plan, uh, I've got some food, not a ton. I'm not like a big food prepper, okay? Um, and I know places, you you know, uh, if things got really bad around where I am, I had no places I could go that are more remote uh, to be safe. Uh, Jason Perry says, what price does silver need to be <laughs> to finish your basement? <laughs> I don't think I'll ever finish the basement. Um, uh, I like an unfinished basement, but I appreciate that question. That's a good one. Good one, uh, Jason Perry. Thomas, thanks again for the super chat. Thank you, everyone, for the super chat. Okay. Um, you guys are being super nice. All right, guys, thank you for joining me. You know I'll be back. You know I'll be looking forward to see you. You know that you are important, okay? You belong here, and you belong in other groups as well. We all have something good that we can offer some people, right? We have one little extra nice thing that we can do today. You know what I did last night that was extra and nice, and I'm not bragging. I'm not asking for any accolades for this. But that darn Susie, you know, remember? Actually, the original bell, right? I brought that bell down here with the intention that I would um, uh, condition her <laughs> to bring me coffee down when I rang the bell. And she did it only one time in the last year and a half, right? But you know what she does to me now every night? We got these cats, and it's her job to clean the litter box. I feed them and give them water in the morning. They're like little scavengers, and I'm a morning person. They're pippy. You know the cats. Anyway, it's her job to clean the litter box. And lately, more and more often, she's saying before we go up, hey, do you think you could do the litter tonight? You know, I call it digging for gold. And anybody who has a cat knows what I'm talking about. I'll leave it at that. You have to take a scoop and you scoop the poop out of the litter box. Well, last night, without her even asking, I thought, it only takes a minute. I'm going to do the litter. So that's it. That's what I did. Do something like that. A little something. Okay, without, you know, and it, it actually makes us feel good. I'll tell you what else makes you feel good is just being nice to somebody. Being nice always feels better than being mean. And, you know, look, nobody's perfect. We can all be mean, but uh, all right. All right, guys. I don't know how I got on that, but you take care, okay? And I'm going to look forward to seeing you soon, all right? It's Friday. Hopefully silver and gold are still up. I'm going to be checking soon. You know that. Talk to you later.